Welcome to another day in the life of uh, Pedro and Steven. So we're halfway between Seattle and uh, Phoenix. Well, not exactly halfway, but we're on our way to halfway. So we stopped over in the Willamette for a few days uh, to do some wine tasting. So this is our first of uh, several wineries that we're going to go to today, uh, Domaine Serene. So we'll get a nice little spot to sit outside, look over the vineyards, and try some of those fabulous wines. How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Lucas. I'm going to talk about Domain Serene a little bit here. So Ken and Grace Sunset are the founders here at Domain Serene. Uh, they actually met on a blind date out in Minnesota. Um, you know, they actually shortly after that, they started their family. They had the daughter Serene, which is where the name comes from. Then they had their son, Mark, which they named their first vineyard uh, after him, the Mark Bradford Single Vineyard Pinot Noir. Uh, eventually, they ended up packing up, moving to Alaska, which got them interested into wine. Their friends actually were large Pinot Noir fans from Burgundy. So we have stay, uh, land here in Oregon, also over in France, which they really wanted to do when they were drinking Pinot Noir, first got them interested. So we have a little bit of land here, a little bit over there. We founded Evanstad Estates, which is just over that hill over there in 1989. Then we have the clubhouse here, which was built in uh, 2017, this building. Then the winery built in 2000. So uh, kind of a fun little uh, fun little tasting room. Right, so we are at our second stop today. We're at Keeler Estates uh, Winery, uh, or Vineyard. And, we're still in Willamette Valley, so all known for their pinots. So we'll see what this one has to bring. I'm so happy to have you both here. Um, my name is Gabrielle Keeler. Uh, I am the co-owner of Keeler State Vineyard. And um, <clears throat> we pride ourselves to be one of the very few wineries in the state of Oregon to uh, be certified uh, biodynamic. <clears throat> what that actually means is in very short that we are self-sufficient within our property, that we only make the wines from the grapes that we grow right here and uh, we um, don't use any chemicals or pesticides. What's your favorite of the wines that you grow? Or maybe of the ones that we tasted? Um, I don't have a favorite. People often ask me that <clears throat> because there are so many uh, things that play a part in what kind of a wine do I want? What do I feel like drinking? Uh, what kind of food am I eating? Um, but short to tell you the truth is my whole uh, philosophy is that there is a time for some good wine. There's a time for a good cold glass of beer and every once in a while a good whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now at winery number three, um, Brooks Winery and uh, this should have probably been earlier in the day. It looks like they have a wonderful yeah. restaurant, a great view. So we're grabbing some quick snacks, which is uh, good because we're starting a little peckish. Yeah. And uh, do a flight of wine. And um, yeah, we're kind of looking forward to it. It looks like they have quite a few Rieslings here. So. Which is something We're I love. Taking that, with I a like bit it. Of trepidation, <laughs> and uh, we'll see how we enjoy. Maybe Pedro will get double flights on the Rieslings, <laughs> and uh, I'll make up for it on the Pinos. All right, hi everyone. My name is April Abate, coming to you from Brooks Winery in Amity, Oregon. Uh, Brooks was founded in 1998 by Jimmy Brooks. Uh, Jimmy was making small lots of Pinot Noir and Riesling here in Willamette Valley. Um, he did that for about six years. And then 2004, two weeks before harvest, Jimmy was found in his kitchen. He had had an aortic aneurysm and passed away at the age of 38. That day, his eight-year-old son, Pascal Brooks, became the youngest winery owner in the world. That's a lot for a little kid to handle. So his aunt, Janie Brooks, she stepped up. Uh, Janie Brooks lives in California to this day, but she's been the managing director of Brooks Winery ever since, keeping this uh, inheritance uh, site 
is strong for her nephew Pascal. So to this day, 17 years later, Janie Brooks Pike is still the managing director of Brooks Winery. Pascal Brooks, at 25 years old, is still the only owner. Um, to my side over here, you'll see the vineyards planted in 1973. So they're almost 50 year old vines. Uh, original rootstocks, self rooted. So they're the European varietal Vias vinifera from top to bottom. Something that requires a lot of meticulous vineyard care on our behalf so that they don't get infected with a bug that likes to eat the roots. Um, but other than that, everything that you see around you, Brooks Production, Brooks Winery, we're 100% biodynamic, which is very similar to organic farming and wine production, but elevated. And I can go into that another time. Um, to this day, Brooks is, to my knowledge, the only winery in the world for now that is Demeter Certified Biodynamic, a certified B Corporation, and a member of 1% for the Planet. We're very aware that we wouldn't be here without the support of our community coming together to help Janie and Pascal when Jimmy passed away. So everything we do is with gratitude in mind and trying to give a little bit back. So if you're ever out here with all the 500 wineries that you can choose to visit, I hope that you come out. Okay, so we are at our, our fourth winery. And <laughs> that called, was kind of a funny little word stumble with um, Pedro. Kaleo. Yep. Called Kaleo Winery. Um, again, this is our fourth winery, and there's, there's her. Just to make sure she's there. Um, so we will give you an update on this. Okay. Hello, you're here at Coelho Winery in Amity. We are a family-ran winery run by a Portuguese family. We specialize in different Portuguese varietals, and we also have non-vintage ports here. We, of course, have the Pinot Noirs that we have three different vineyards in Oregon from three different ABAs, so you get a nice selection of different Pinot Noirs and get to see what the different soils do to our wines. Hi, guys. Um, so we kind of wanted to end this video with um, kind of like a recap or things we would have done differently or advice we could give to you guys so so from a high level perspective we stayed in McMinnville at the McMinnimans uh, the McMinnimans is uh, kind of a chain of eclectic hotels um, they're not super fancy uh, and that particular hotel um, all the rooms had shared bathrooms we were fortunate that nobody was in the room next to us so we ended up with our own bathroom but there was a risk clear that we were going to be fighting over who could go to the bathroom at a certain time but it was a really cool location and there were tons of restaurants around so i would highly recommend staying there again or looking at different options um, close to that because i think we had probably five to ten different restaurant choices um, in that small little part of town which was lovely uh, we went to four different wineries um and then uh it was important, I think, that we had reservations at those one, at those uh, locations, which we did. We were able to make adjustments throughout the day. Uh, four was probably one too many. Um, there there might have been a little bit of slurring in the last uh, <laughs> location that we went to. Um, and then it was hard to just to kind of pack it all in and, and not just relax at the winery. So I think to do it over again, three would be the magic number for us. Yeah, it was just really fast. So. So, and then you can stop and enjoy and maybe take a walk through the vineyards or something as well, which would have been kind of lovely, especially while we were going around with the dogs. Um, everybody that we talked to was very dog friendly, so it was, it was nice to have had um, her with us on the trip. Um, but what a great location. Uh, the Willamette's beautiful, located right between two large mountain ranges with the Van Duzer corridor that allows cool air to, uh, to kind of keep the area from getting too hot in the summer. Um, and that air just flows right in off the Pacific. So lovely spot. So, and then just to recap everything, downtown McMinnville is definitely a good place to stay due to the restaurants. And there's also a bunch of tasting rooms and stuff like that there. Um, and then make sure you guys have reservations. It's probably one thing I can't stress enough is make sure you have a reservation because if they're full, they're not going to get you. So. Enjoy.